So when you are cleaning the traps, um, is there a specific focus you've got? Yeah, I think firstly I always clean the plate. You remove the animal off, get rid of the animal matter off that. Sure. Um, and then um, as I'm lifting the, the trap up, I'm also cleaning um, the upright, the bar. Right. Um, and, and ensuring that's all clean. And Do you find that it, it can jam at that top pin if it's not clean very well? Yeah, I always move the, the pin and... Um, and ensure there's no um, fur, it's often fur that's stuck yeah, okay. onto the top. The other thing yeah. we were finding occasionally is you can get things like snails under the plates yeah. which yeah. stop it depressing, yeah. you know, yeah. so yeah. not technically yeah. a cleaning thing but something to be aware yeah. of, eh? Yeah, we find sometimes you get quite a lot of um, leaf litter in there. Yeah. A stick quite often is adequate to yeah. just true, true. do it or juggling the box down. Yeah. So what do you normally clean your uh, Dog 200 traps with? Oh, at the moment I'm using a Goldilocks because yeah. you, it's you can get into the nooks and crannies of the the um, trap, and it's re you know you can use it time and time again. It's cheap, um, it's easy to carry around, and I find with the wire brushes you stick your hand into your bum bag, grab it out, oh, and you yeah. get pricked by it. So I don't know that. So in terms of um, in terms of the maintenance of the products, obviously a lot of them are stainless now, but they haven't always been. Did you yeah. use protectant agents in that? Early in the piece, people trialled cooking oil and the likes of that. Yeah. Um, personally, I found that more problematic. Um, debris sticks to it. Um, you've got a dusty situation, dusty road or whatever, and, and the mechanism of the trap seizes up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah we've, um, we've gone through a range of products as well over time, and um, there's definitely the, there's sprays in the can, lanolin-based products that, yeah. that we seem to, uh, to find do the job. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a different point. Yeah, we're point finding the land loan's really good. Yeah. Um, the other one that we have used to some success is Dry Guide as well, but I think the land loan's a better product. Right. Than I know that some people in certain areas use graphite for, for certain protection points. Do you use yeah. that on the dock series at all? Yeah, we do, especially with the um, alloy traps, um, the, the, the nib. And we do, do it, I do it on my stainless steel traps too, just where the nib is, put a little, little bit of... Um, graphite there, use a builder's pencil and at the end of the pin right. um, and with the alloy traps with your um, pin sometimes gets a bit stiff so if you actually rub a bit of or put a bit of graphite dust or rub a pencil on, on where the, the hinge is on the, the pin that aids yeah. it. Yeah sure. Yeah. Do you ever find that the traps are a little bit too sensitive at all? They can be if you've got a, uh, a double set especially, though. Um, raising the sear a little bit um, is, is generally how we fix the problem. Right, yeah. um, they can over time naturally adjust their sensitivity as they, they get animal remains on them, so you do have to keep testing maybe annually, have right. a look at them, make sure that you, you haven't assumed that they're still working properly, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if I was to catch something like a, a mouse in it, that may be indicating? Indicating too light, absolutely. Yeah. It's probably a single mouse isn't that common, but, but no. double mouse capture definitely yeah. happens yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah no, of course. Yeah, it does happen. Yeah. Yeah.